Hi, okay, in this video, we are gonna be discussing what is uh, essentially SAS and why you would use it. So SAS is essentially a JavaScript preprocessor for uh, CSS. So uh, the benefits of this would be to uh, reduce the amount of code you have to write at any given point. Um, so th if, if you're new to CSS, this might be a little uh, advanced or sort of perplexing at the moment, confusing. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and give a breakdown of how you can jump directly into this. I'm going to try to give the quickest uh, overview possible of it. I don't think it's terribly complicated. You can get pretty complicated with it. Uh, this isn't going to get into mix-ins. We're not going to do uh, a ton of variables or anything like that. This is really just if you're completely new to it. Um, we'll probably do some other videos that are uh, more specific to mix-ins, uh, different includes, things like that. Um, at any rate, so here's an example of the difference between just writing what I'd call vanilla CSS and SAS. So regular CSS, you do something like, uh, you know, div with an ID of test. Uh, inside that div, there's an H1. Inside that is an A, I'm sorry, an anchor tag. And, you know, you do something like, uh, you know, display block um, float left color uh, blue. Okay. So uh, there are obviously benefits to doing this, but uh, SAS, let's do a quick example of how you would write this in SAS. Uh, and why this might actually be substantially better uh, for your workflow, especially. And I found this very useful. Um, so there are going to be a lot of instances for uh, where you are going to have to style this uh, div by itself. And you don't want to have to keep rewriting it. Um, essentially, SAS allows you to nest these selectors and go in and outside of the nest to... Uh, do your styling. So for this div, uh, you know, you could do uh, background orange. Then you can go, okay, well, in this div, uh, there's an H1. Then you can do uh, you can give it any sort of styling. And so essentially what you're doing is nesting and the implications of this, like I said before, are, uh, let's see, I'm just making stuff up. So uh, at any rate, the implications of this would be that you don't have to rewrite a bunch of stuff over and over again. I don't have to come back down here. So if you were to go with this section right here, the quote vanilla CSS, you'd have to go, okay, uh, background, I'm sorry background orange okay come back here again do h1 uh, color pink so it gets you, you end up doing this a lot like line after line so it's it's a lot of repetition uh, sass i would say in short removes repetition uh, the downfall of sass would be if you get too complicated um so for instance, if you have, uh, people do this all the time, and I'll get these SAS files that are nuts. Um, we'll do, okay, so for instance, this is where it can get bad. You can you can actually go overkill with the nesting. Do div um, blue. Inside of that is a span. I'm sorry, not a span. Let's do a div uh, orange, super creative. Um, green inside of that is a span you got your styling here then you have an H1 inside of that is a span inside of that is, uh, you know, a before tag. 
and then maybe you also want to tag it and uh, target an anchor tag that's inside of it. So you can see this, this just gets unmanageable. This is nuts. So the issue with this is that you get so specific um, that if you want to edit this in the future, it, it becomes uh, just totally un unmanageable. So take this, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite all the way down to this end before, right up here, just to show you how the preprocessor works. Um, so the way it'll write it when the, uh, the style sheet actually uh, compiles. So the, the whole thing with SAS is that it takes this and uh, let me just show an example real quick of what it does. Okay, uh, big thing too is uh, the, the way that it, it knows, there, there are a couple ways you can pre-process this. So Coda, for instance, the editor I use, I use a plugin, which I don't recommend. I actually just recently stopped using it, but uh, you would use something like Compass. I'll go to that here in a minute. But this is this is what it's gonna output. This is gonna be a completely compiled uh, style sheet. So you save a lot of space, but the issue with this is that the selectors are incredibly specific. You can see right there. Uh, they, they get very specific. So th this is going to compile like this. So it's going to say div test, uh, and then we go to div blue, div orange, uh, div green span, uh, and then another span uh, before. So this is how it's going to write it out. Okay, so this is super specific. So if I come along here and I go div test uh, span before, in terms of specificity, this is gonna outweigh this. So even in a media query where, for instance, I come in here and I go when, you know, when the quote uh, device is under 480 pixels, I want this to be blue. It's, it even though the, uh, even though the media query is very specific unto itself, it's still gonna get overridden by this. This is just nuts. So one of one of the downfalls, uh, once again, of SAS is that you're going to be uh, constantly balancing how specific you get. I'm gonna delete this real quick. So one of the things I recommend is not to go beyond three layers. So uh, so this would, this would be, or, or an indentation, nest, whatever you wanna call it. So that would be two, and then this would be three. So this is manageable. I think you can always manage this. Uh, but you can get to the point where it's just absolutely ridiculous, and SAS is actually uh, more of a hindrance than anything. So um, at any rate, uh, let's get to uh, Compass. So let me go to... All right, so Compass is an... Uh, just a local uh, app that basically does all the uh, compiling for you. And I believe it's built on Node, I'm not really sure. It's built, uh, I get so confused with all this stuff. I have so many apps running that are uh, Ruby based or, or Node and honestly that goes a little bit beyond what I typically do. Um, okay, so yeah, let's start this up. It's cool, it just runs in your, uh, taskbar and what you're going to do is so for instance if you have sites um okay let's say for instance i want to watch this folder you go to compass and you say watch folder and then you can just choose whatever folder you want and it knows to compile any sas files that come out of that um anyway so it's as simple as that uh I used to just use this plugin. Uh, I don't even know what it's called. It, it was directly from Git, and it just crashes. I've contacted Coda uh, about it, and it's just you know it's not a supported plugin, and it's just uh, Coda went from being a really good uh, code editor to horrible just because of this third-party non-supported uh, app. So I just switched over to Compass. Uh, at the time that I bought Compass, it was like 10 bucks, I think. I don't know how much they're selling it for anymore. Let's see.
10 bucks. Okay, still 10 bucks. I guess I didn't get that good of a deal. Uh, looks like that's the going rate. Anyway, so you buy that, it's worth it, it's good. Uh, never crashes. Uh, it, it stands outside of your editor, so you don't have to worry about anything like that. But that's essentially what SAS is. It is good for your workflow. Uh, it's gonna be good uh, for compiling. So you can uh, you can choose in your preferences how you want it to compile. Do you, do you want it to uh, compress like the previous folder uh, that I showed you? I'm not the folder, the CSS file uh, where there's uh, no spaces, uh, no line breaks, anything like that. So it can take an incredibly monstrous CSS file and, and compress it down to, you know, less than a third of, of what its original size was. So I wouldn't really look at this as anything other than a really good workflow uh, way of approaching your CSS. Um, personally, I can't live without it. I think it's uh, an absolute must. If I had to hand code, uh, you know, this and repeat it multiple times, you know, style for this, and then go, go to the next div that's inside of it, things like that, it, it would be awful. So um, that's kind of a thousand foot overview of what SAS is. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create some subsequent videos that get into uh, how to use SAS, uh, use mixins, um, different variables, and, and uh, I like to do mobile first uh, responsive approach. So we can get in some imports, uh, things of that nature, imports versus sprockets, uh, uh, things like that. So this video is really intended for somebody that knows uh, basic CSS that might want to jump over into this arena, kind of uh, take it to the next step. So this is more of an explanation, not really a tutorial. I hope this helps. Uh, leave any comments, like, subscribe, uh, and I will be uh, punctual and get back to you. Thanks.